Hey guys, it's your girl Shalay and I'm back today with a Motivational Monday video. In today's video, we're going to discuss my H&R Block Tax Course update. So if you want to know how your girl is doing in the class, you already know what to do. Stay tuned, your girl's got you covered. Now if this is your first time tuning into my channel, hi, hello, hey friend. My name is Shalay and here on this channel we talk about shopping, saving, and everything in between. I would love to have you a part of my internet family, super easy. Click the big old red subscribe button down below and you are in just like that. And while you're at it, go ahead and give me a like because you love videos like this and I enjoy making them. Now let's go ahead and talk about this H&R Block tax course. Guys, back in September, I enrolled in the course while working a very demanding full-time job. What was I thinking? I don't know what I was thinking, but initially I wanted to do a weekly video to kind of give you an update on my progress, especially for those that may be considering taking the course. But yeah, that didn't work out too well. But now, this week we will actually be taking our midterm. So if you want to know how I've been doing and what the course is like, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so what is the H&R Block Tax Course? Now, if this is your first time tuning into my channel, I did a video earlier in the course and showing you how to register for the class. I'll definitely link that in the cards. But the H&R tax course is actually marketed to the public as a way for you to learn how to prepare taxes and possibly get a job working for H&R Block. So it's not a guarantee that you will get a job working for the upcoming tax season, but they do actually look at their students first. So I hope that helps some people. Now, with the course, you must be at least 18 years old or older in some states, and some states actually require for you to have a high school diploma or equivalent. In the state of Alabama, we don't require that, and most states, I guess, they didn't require it as well. Now, signups usually occur in August, and at that time, the classes can run from August to November or December. Even though I signed up for the course in August, my class did not actually start until September and it will go until like a few days before Christmas. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> now, due to the pandemic, all the classes are virtual, but normally you can actually go inside the location and attend classes. And the classes were very like reasonable. We'll get into like the timing and how everything works, but you do need some type of computer. So I would say that you need like a basic computer or a tablet for certain things or modules that we did, you won't be able to do those on your phone. So if you don't have a computer, I would say hold off or if you don't have access to a computer. So if you can borrow like, you know, your cousin's computer, go ahead and do that. But I would not depend on like a library or like another setting for the computer. I would rather you have your own on there. Now the class does meet on like a video conferencing platform. It's kind of like Zoom, but it's H&R's block on version of Zoom. And at that time, it's super easy. You get the invite, same invite every single week you log on. Now, the one thing that I absolutely love about it is that you do not appear on camera. Can we say that again? You do not appear on camera. Um, which to me, that was a great thing because you know, some days you just don't wanna get dressed up, right? But, on there also just think about it this way you're hearing someone talk majority of the time so if you're a person that hey you rather have that engagement on camera you're not going to get that and now the classes are taught in english and spanish as well as textbooks do provide for english and spanish proficiency as well so how much does the course cost the course is actually marketed as free but you are required to pay for course materials which is about 149 dollars in most states you can order your study guide online through Staples at no additional charge. Now guys, let me tell you, this study guide is no joke. Look at how thick this thing is. Oh my gosh, it is really thick. Now when you receive your welcome email, it does show you how to process or order your study guide, which it takes about five to seven days before it arrives. My teacher decided to upload the first three chapters of the study guide while we awaited our book. So. I don't know if all teachers do that, but this thing, okay, you will definitely need it and make sure that you process the order as soon as you get the email. 
What is the time commitment? The time commitment is generally six hours per week, either on weeknights or weekends. The course that I take is twice a week from six to 9 p.m. Now let's put a pause right there, okay? What was I thinking on having a full-time job, getting off work at five, and now having to attend class from six to nine? Yeah, the struggle is real. And if you have children, I would definitely reconsider that late night shift class. Now it is 60 hours of instruction, which is pretty much instructor led. And you do have online sessions, you have practice tests, as well as you're only allowed to miss one eight hour class. Now, with that being said, there are so many other classes that are going on. So just say if you can't attend your class from 6 to 9 p.m., then what you can do is hop in another class with a different instructor. But who, who has time for that? Like, I don't have time for that. And let me tell you this, you are required to do homework. So you don't attend class twice every single week. There are some that are called like blackout days. And even though it's a day that you don't attend class, you are still required to do homework. So keep that in mind that it's not just you attending class, but you will have to do work outside of the classroom as well. So what is my personal experience of taking the course? Before registering for the course, I read a lot of reviews online, good and bad, and so I went into the class with very low expectations. Personally, I love learning. I always register for anything and everything, but this year, guys, my income has changed drastically. Like, your girl is out here getting money everywhere, okay? I'm getting to the coin. And so I thought this class would definitely help me and my business regarding like taxes and what deductions I qualify for and what I needed to be doing for the upcoming tax season. I didn't go into it thinking, hey, I would get a job. If they offered me a job, then girl, that's just like the cherry on top. But that was not the reasoning for me taking the course. Now, the class started off very easy, but it did get hard, okay? Especially when you're learning how to calculate credits and not only calculate credits on how to qualify for deductions and which family members qualify as dependents. Cause y'all already know, like this is not the bootleg way where you can have your cousin's sister that you claim on your taxes. No, they're telling you the questions that you need to ask to make sure that people do qualify as a dependent and it also lets you know like how you can be fined if you decide to give people some extra dependents that don't qualify. Y'all already know what I'm talking about. Nonetheless, this is giving you the proper way of doing taxes, okay? Not your other ways that you may be able to do. Now, some of the funny parts of the class you get where people decide um, or forget to mute their line so you can hear a whole conversation in the background of somebody's family. That's to be expected to me when it comes to the video conferencing. Our teacher, she was super nice and she tried to keep us engaged by sharing like some of her stories. Y'all, she told us that in her tax, when she was working during tax season, someone spit on her. Say what now? <laughs> Wait a minute. So she did include like different stories to keep us engaged because remember, like I said earlier, you're not on screen. So it's just listening to someone talk a lot of the time. So not only with the stories, but she also helped us apply for the application on how to get hired for the upcoming tax season, which spoiler alert, your girl already got an offer letter. I'm just saying, I'm just, like, who want me to do their taxes? Raise your hand, raise your hand. But yeah, so she did teach us how to, um, or go in and apply for a position for the upcoming tax season. And then my local office, they stayed in contact with me throughout the whole class. So I thought that was super cool. They were weekly like sending me text messages and saying, hey, how are you doing in the class? Is there something that we need to go over? So they just made sure to keep in touch. So my personal experience of the class, I think it was like G to G. That means like good to go. Like I, <laughs> I think the course was good to go and I don't have a negative experience regarding the course. But like I said, for some people, if you're not used to actually not seeing people on camera and you don't wanna hear someone talk, it may not be for you. So is it worth it to take the course? I would say it's worth it to take the course depending on what you are looking for. If you want to learn how to prepare taxes and possibly get a job at H&R Block, 
then go for it. Because we know tax preparers actually get flexible schedule, you can get commission, and you get to do your own tax returns for free. Girl, that's right, I said for free. So to me, that alone is worth it because normally I pay H&R Block about three to $400 to do my taxes. So that initial investment, girl, I didn't make my money back tenfold. All right, now some of the cons on taking the course is one, the course requirement. It is a strenuous requirement, guys. I wanna make sure I stress that enough to you. You will need computer, um, you will need a computer and you will need internet access. Also, it's not a guarantee that you will be hired on by H&R Block. So if you're taking the course and you think, hey, this $149 guarantees you a job, that isn't so. Alrighty. Not only that, there is a competitor clause in there where you cannot work for a competitor or start your own tax business within a few years. So keep that in mind. If you're doing this to try to start your own business, there is a certain time frame that you will have to wait. But if that doesn't bother you, then hey, by all means, go with the flow, okay? Definitely take the course. Now also, if you already are a tax preparer, don't even worry about doing this course, okay? There is an assessment that you can take, and if you pass that assessment, you are good to go, you don't need to take the course. Or if you're looking, like if you're one of my seasoned watchers and you want something just to get you out the house, you really don't want to become a, like a tax preparer in the upcoming season, or you don't even want it as a job, then guys, you may want to look into like voluntary um, tax preparation because those are like, there's some nonprofits who will train you on how to do taxes and help people that really need it most and you don't get paid for it. So that's all I have, okay? I hope this was very informative and you can make your decision on if you want to be a preparer or take the course next year as well. Let me know what you thought about it. Are you enrolled in the course? Are you thinking about taking the course? Let me know down in the comments below and I will bring you one more video and that is at the end of the course and let you know from there. And then you already know I got you like tax season. Oh girl, I wish somebody would, okay? I wish somebody would act up in the tax office with me, all right? So that's all I got guys. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye guys.